So after watching the recent gameplay for Middle Earth Shadow of War, I was very happy with how the game looks. Like, I was very happy. I was expecting it to be good anyway, because I did love the first game, it was great. But they improved so much in this second game, and they've just refined so much that was great in the first game. Instead of trying to reinvent the game or like changing loads of stuff up, they've kept it the same and just added to it and made everything that was in the first game better, which is what a lot of developers need to do because. You know, it's what people used to do. They used to make a game, it would be awesome, and then they'd just improve it instead of trying to remake it or be all innovative and stuff. But what Warner Brothers have done here is they've just taken everything that was great in the first game and made it even better and added on top of that as well. So if you can't already tell, today's video is going to be talking about the new gameplay that has been released for Middle Earth Shadow of War. This game looks awesome, I fucking loved the first game, it was really good, had great gameplay aspects, the story was a bit weak, but I remember the innovative nemesis system and just how fun it was to just kill loads of Uruk and stuff like that. It was, it was a really good game and it seems that Warner Brothers have improved on absolutely everything. So literally the first thing that comes to everyone's mind when talking about this game is the nemesis system and it's definitely been improved. There's new enemy features, new weaknesses and personal history that you can have. Like obviously you had the personal history before in Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, but in Shadow of War it's, it's all more extensive and they've completely revamped everything. There's not really much to talk about in terms of the Nemesis system because everyone knows what it is and it's kind of the staple of their game series, but there are many other things in this gameplay demo that I can see that look so much better than the first game. One of these things being the playable environments. Now this gameplay demo takes place during a fort infiltration, which is really cool because the Gameplay area in the first Shadow of Mordor wasn't really that great. It wasn't all that interesting It was like the very muddy areas in Mordor and then a kind of grassy area and a lot of it looked the same all over but with these forts it will give us like different environments we can go to this one in particular is kind of like all fiery because the overlord is kind of a fire-based enemy but yeah you use your army to infiltrate these forts and lay siege to everything in the area and we kind of saw something like this at the end of shadow of mordor where you take your army that you've been building up for the whole game to defeat sauron so it is really cool i think this is awesome because at the end of the game i really enjoyed bringing my whole army in and now you can just do this as like a side thing in the game it's fucking awesome I love it when games do that, because like, at the end you kind of get a taste of it in the first game, and the second game, it's just normal to do that, it's, it's really fucking awesome, I can't wait to get some unique experiences and take on some overlords with my Uruk and stuff like that, it's going to be really fucking cool. Similar to the Nemesis system, there's also more extensive features in your army, you can have different types of Uruk, like heavy ones, ranged ones, mounted ones, it's really fucking awesome, and you can even form relationships, like friendships with your Uruk. So it, it's fucking awesome because in the first game they were just kind of mindless slaves that were working for you and killing other enemies and stuff like that. But in this game it seems they're actually a vital part of the gameplay experience and you can even come to like some of your companions which is really awesome because you know it's obviously progressing that friendship system opposed to them just being random NPCs that you use. Something else that was shown in the gameplay is new armor and probably new weapons as well. If there's going to be new armor, there's got to be customizable weapons. Now, that's something that I thought the first game was lacking. You couldn't really customize your weapons or armor that extensively, but in this game, they've finally added it in, and that just makes the game so much better in terms of the RPG elements that it has, because I love progressive armor. Like, I, I'm a fucking sucker for, like, weapons and armor in games. Like, I will do anything to get the best of the best, best upgrades, best perks. And I, I, I just love armor in games, so seeing this makes me very happy because the first game was lacking that, and I just fucking love armor. Like, there's nothing else that I can say. I love armor and weapons in games. But this will mean loads of sets of customizable armor and weapons, and this makes me very, very excited because I love like customizable things and progression in games like that's one of the reasons why i initially loved assassin's creed 2 and that because it had the progression of the armor and stuff similarly to games like the witcher 3 and horizon zero dawn has done it recently where like you just get better armor and the better your better your gear is the better you feel in the game it just you feel more powerful and uh, that progression is just really awesome to see in games and it needs to be done more in all fairness because other games are more focused on the gameplay aspect and you know the open world and stuff 
stuff like that. But I love it when games kind of focus more on the RPG aspects in terms of things like armor and the progression of weapons and stuff. It's fucking really cool. Also in the gameplay you can see Talion riding a drake, which is just a type of dragon. And um, basically this could point to other possible mounts in the games as well because there's the Karagors that you can see Italian riding in the gameplay demo also and you have the Drake but there could also be more rideable mounts in the game as well that are specific to different fort locations and stuff like that and could just be around in the world because I highly doubt they only added one more mount into the game if they're gonna add one more mount they're probably gonna add a load more and it's gonna be awesome to see the types of mounts we can ride in the game because the mounts were very overshadowed in the first game, I didn't really use them an awful lot and I'd like to feel as if there's a need for them because in the first game there wasn't really a need for them at all. The abilities to upgrade that you had that allowed you to ride on mounts and stuff, it wasn't all that interesting. I was like, ah, I don't really care, I'll get the upgrades because the upgrade is there and I can get it, but I'm probably never going to use it and I didn't ever use it. So I'd like to see a reason to actually use mounts in this game because in the first one they were just so fucking redundant. So possibly in different parts of the map there will be different mounts that you can ride and stuff like that and hopefully there'll be more fast ground mounts than just the Karagors because Karagors are pretty boring, not gonna lie. I'd like to see something like a horse, because horses are great. I've already I've already voiced my opinion on horses in games. I love horses. They're great. Just slap a horse in there and it'll be the best game ever to me. Enough about the mounts. The thing that shines the most in this demo is the Overlord boss battle. It looks really cool, and as specified in the gameplay demo by the commentator, each of these rooms where you fight the Overlord is customised by the Overlord themselves to suit their combat style and stuff like that. So the one in this gameplay demo is really fiery because obviously he is a fire based enemy so that suits his combat style there which is really cool to see which means that every player's experience will be different in some way in terms of the room that you fight the Overlord in which is really cool to see because Shadow of Mordor, the original game, did a lot of things that were really cool that made your experience very unique and it's cool to see that they are improving on this and extending the uniqueness of your world in the game and this is just another one of those things. So the boss battle is really cool, you have a, a few of his henchmen in the background that you have to deal with, just adds on the boss, they're not very difficult to take out at all and then obviously he is the main event because you're there to kill him obviously. <laughs> But yeah, it's just a really interesting boss battle, and I'm sure there'll be some boss battles when you're taking down forts that'll be really fucking difficult, because obviously each of the overlords will have different attack abilities, like some might be sorcerers, some might use ice, I don't know. But um, this particular one doesn't look that difficult at all, but that's obviously for demo purposes to show you the possibilities of each fort. But yeah, overall I really enjoyed the gameplay demo for Shadow of War. It looks really cool, it looks like it builds on everything that was in the first game, Game. It makes everything better and adds so much to the world and the game and I'm super excited to see more of it at E3 and get my hands on it when it comes out in August because it does look really really good and yeah that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed, be sure to go ahead and like and subscribe for more content in the future and also remember to comment down in the comment section what you think of this new Shadow of War gameplay, I think it looks fucking awesome and uh, yeah cheers for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!